Hey everybody, this is Michael Filesage checking in here. And uh, well, yesterday I posted the video for the poo cake, right? Um, so that video was actually recorded on the 22nd of October, right? So that's about 11 days ago or somewhere thereabouts. And these are the cakes, right? So we have moved in time, right? We have time traveled. We have skipped 11 days and now, so now you guys can see how they're doing. Yeah, I wanted to give you guys a quick update because actually, I don't, I, I, I might have, I actually did cut it out of the video. Uh, but what I actually inoculated this with was an experiment, okay? So I took a jar, okay? It was about half the size of this jar. I looked for it so I could show you guys, but I can't find it. Basically, it's a mason jar that's like half the size. It's like 500 milliliters of water. I think, I guess that's half pint, no, but, but I don't know. Like, like a pint jar, I guess. Yeah, yeah, a pint jar. So I used a pint jar and what I did was I used uh, Munchausen, uh, AKA the trusted cultivator on YouTube, right? His channel. Uh, he has a blenderless inoculant tech. Okay, so what, first of all, what is, why is it blenderless? Okay, what does that have to do with anything? And what is a, what is a liquid inoculant? Because that's what it is. It's a liquid inoculant, not liquid culture. And a liquid inoculant is basically a liquid, liquidified uh, agar wedge with mycelium. That's it, right? Okay, so apart from, so different from a liquid culture where you have nutrients in the media, so that the, the the mycelium inside can perpetuate itself, right? Whereas with the liquid inoculant, it's just the agar wedge, you just shake it up, so it's all over the water, right? All the mycelium bits, and then you use that as inoculation. So basically, that's it. And why would you wanna do that? Well, because A, it's got lesser chance of contam, it's easier and quicker to prepare than a liquid culture. Uh, but on the other hand, you would basically make it when you wanna use it. Whereas with liquid culture, you could store it for a while. And you get much faster inoculation times in theory with uh, using liquid inoculant. That's basically it. Uh, but the thing is, uh, with the blenderless liquid inoculant, okay, so basically what you do is you take a jar, right? You put put a little bit of sterile water in there, okay? And then you take an agar wedge, you drop that agar wedge inside the jar, right? And then you shake the crap out of it, right? And the agar wedge should start breaking and uh, it'll be in numerous pieces. So then after that, then you basically put it into the, to, to grain jars. Okay, so you do little by little, you know, put it inside grain jars and it works. It works great. Uh, because usually the the reason that it's blenderless, right, is because you just have to shake it, right? Because the traditional liquid inoculant has you modifying jar lids to fit onto like blender, like, like basically installing a teeth of a blender on here, like modifying it. And then so that you could just put the jar with the agar directly on top of the blender machine right and fit into it and then turn on the thing and then it'll just like you know directly in the jar it'll just grind up the agar plate okay but friggin' hell nobody has time for that uh <laughs> you know make, making like crazy modified uh blender blender lids i'm not a very much of a di DIY, diy person so uh, that, that that would that's i would never do that so basically this tech is great because you just have to mix it up shake it up and that's it and it gets the job done very well uh, but my uh, personal interest was, could I take that, you know, chunky uh, liquid and somehow put it inside a spore syringe? Oh, sorry, inside a syringe like this, right? Could I put it inside a syringe? And, you know, even though, because obviously the, the syringe, the needle tip is very narrow, so you can't really get any bits really, except some really small ones. So basically when I looked at it, I could barely see anything, right? But I could see there was some like movement, you know, clearly it wasn't just water that much I could tell, if I, especially if I shook it up. But my, my test was, could I use, would there be enough mycelium filaments, small mycelium filaments in the water that if I inoculated, for example, PF cakes and use that instead of a spore syringe, right? Which means that I would get the benefit of having clean culture, right? Uh, would it actually work? Would it actually colonize? So that was my test. And I had high hopes for it, you know, because I was like, okay, well, because even though there's the agar wedge, there's still, you know, it's not just on the top layer that the mycelium is on. There's actually little filaments going down all throughout the wedge inside. So even though there wasn't any big bits that this thing could suck up, I knew that there, there had to be some mycelium in there. Um, now for next time though, what I do, if you guys have like a bigger needle gauge, I would absolutely recommend that you have much better results doing that. Basically this experiment was to see if that's a viable option because 
my other option then for the poo cakes that I was going to do is going to make an, an agar slurry. And that's basically where you take a, a agar, right? Agar plate. And then you just take the syringe and you just sort of rough up the mycelium on top while putting some water in there, mix some water in there and then pull it back up. So then you would have like little bits of mycelium inside and then use that as inoculant. That's basically an agar slurry. Now, obviously the problem with that is, you know, this isn't very sterile, right? Kind of risky and pulling in, pulling out, pulling in. That's what she said, <laughs> you know, it's, it's risky. So that was a problem. So that's why I wanted to just do it with this. Also, this is just a lot less stressful if this would work. Okay, so did it work or did it not? Okay, it did work. Uh, did it work as well as I thought it would? Not really, but it worked enough that it actually worked. So uh, I wanna show you guys how these jars did. Um, so as you can see, we got some mycelium. So you see some points have absolutely no mycelium and I was very, very generous. A whole syringe was put into these jars here, a whole syringe, right? Now, if I was doing a spore syringe, I wouldn't put that much, but I put a lot because I was like, okay, well, let's see if we can get some fast colonization times. Um, so as you can see, there's a little bit of mycelium there. There's some mycelium there. Uh, and to be honest, right? I've, I've had much faster growth from spore, fresh spores with fresh spore syringes. I've had like, you know, growth in two days, literally. You can see mycelium growing in two days if you use really good fresh spore syringes. So yeah, I've had much faster growth, honestly. At this point, for example, it would be mostly colonized with, with the types of syringes I was using. But it's working, right? And, and you do have the benefit of having a cleaner culture. So here's a better one, right? See that? That's quite a bit. So I shot like two per hole on each side. So I'll put it through there and then just one here, one here, you know. And as you can see, some of them did inoculate. The one on this side did not, as you can see. And the one on this side did not either. But, you know, it's good enough. And they are colonizing. So it took many, many days. It took like a week, at least for me to start seeing growth, which was surprising because the mycelium's already germinated, right? It's not like they need to germinate like a spore syringe. So technically it should have been faster, but it took a long, long time to see my, this mycelium pop up, but it did pop up. So I'm happy. And clearly these guys are doing well. There's no contamination or anything. So very exciting guys. These Floridian poo lovers, or I should call them poo onlys. I bought some button mushrooms from the supermarket to a uh, clone and I'm going to be trying to do a uh, a tub type grow uh, because one of my viewers sort of inspired me to and uh, because you know like people grow a lot of oysters a lot of lion's mane a lot of reishi you know the common ones but for some reason like the most common mushroom is barely grown right you know button mushrooms um, the most common gourmet mushrooms right so I'm like mm, that's interesting and I've always wondered for a while. So I was like, okay, well, let's try it out. You know, I need to do a bit more research on it, but basically it seems they like colder temperatures, they like a lot of fresh air exchange. So, you know, it's, we're going into winter now. So I thought, hey, maybe this is a good time to try growing some button mushrooms. And okay, so here's the scout one, right? Here's the little guy, if you guys remember from the last video, yes, that I released yesterday, the poo cakes part one. So this guy was supposed to be, in theory, the fastest, but this guy literally has no growth and I shot the most inoculant in here. And still there's absolutely no growth, which is weird. But, <laughs> well, that's how it goes sometimes, right? That's the comedy of life. So yeah, that's basically it. And uh, to end the video, I wanna show you guys, if you guys remember, I had the bacterial top rooters, right? So this is the first one that I did, okay? Um, so yeah, still bacterial. As you can see, the mycelium is actually starting to eat up the bottom layer, the weird bottom layer. And uh, I cased it quite a while. It took ages for it to colonize the core, right? And then eventually it became, it became all white on top. And then I put a casing layer like over a week ago. And there's just like really no movement going on. Absolutely nothing. No contam, no mycelium, just nothing. So I think I'm going to finally dump this guy. You did well. And here's the other one, right? So this guy, this guy, okay, this guy, this guy. This is the newest one that I put core on. And this guy actually ate up all the bottom layer, right? And uh, I misted it quite a bit uh, the day before yesterday. 
And then yesterday night I noticed, I was like, oh, there's a lot of white stuff on here. I wonder what's going on. And then I look at it and I was like, oh no, this is mold. So it's rapidly colonized with mold straight on the core. And um, this, uh, this mold is actually, I, I believe it's the same one that was on the Jiffy Mix. If you guys remember the Jiffy Mix, I opened it up and it was full of this white mold. And uh, yeah, and this same mold has actually come onto one of the uh, uh, Floridium, the, the grass lovers, right? The grass lover cakes that I was doing. One of them, it actually got on some of the casing layer. Uh, so there's a flush going on there now. So I'm just waiting for the fruits to grow. They're not growing very fast or anything, the mold, I mean. Uh, so after that flush, I'm going to dump it. But you know, I still have four fruiting uh, cakes, right? Four fruiting uh, stone cakes. So yeah, the Floridiums are still going. That's it. So I'm gonna pressure cook this baby. And you know what? At least you guys tried, right? At least these guys tried. And at least I gave them a chance, okay? I gave them a fair chance and it just didn't work out. So I'm going to I'm okay with pressure cooking them now and reusing these jars for some new guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Michael File Sage checking out. Don't forget to like, sub, and comment if you would like more videos. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you all.